Friends, thanks again for uh, your interest in my uh, approach to uh, statistics and probability. Uh, last time I did something on correlation, then midway I had some regrets. Why? Because I realized we didn't have to go so far as correlation to figure out that there's something wrong in the way uh, people, including practicing statisticians, understand the statistical concept they're dealing with. So correlation is, say I have x, which will equal x1, x2, xn. Okay, so I have a vector of n variables. And y, y1, yn. So correlation is the relationship between x and y, in other words, between each one of these observations, and, and what kind of cross-dependence we have, or a reflection on some kind of association between these two, x and y. But before we get there, the very same tools, <laughs> just applied to x or y, are completely messed up, and we're going to see why. It's in a, a lot of the stuff is in my uh, statistical consequences of fat tails, chapter three, I think chapter four discusses this problem with standard deviation because standard deviation only works, okay, the metrics we use for x is standard deviation. So let's talk about STB, the metrics, the met and the metrics used just for one variable in one dimension. So the first problem is that if I tell you define standard deviation, most people have the perception that standard deviation means how much something moves on average every day. And we quizzed people, we quizzed, <laughs> just to tell you how misunderstood these concepts are, people can write down on paper what they mean. And when you quiz them, as has done, been done by many decision scientists, they explain something else. So. You ask people what is standard deviation, and they tell you what, how much something moves about on average every day. We found it on websites of government <laughs> agencies, this definition. The Economist, of course, you can always look if you want, want a wrong definition in The Economist. So standard deviation is not how much something moves on average. Standard deviation, I take x1, x2, x3, xn, okay? I take the average, x bar, and then what I do is I take the sum of xi minus x bar square, that's what's critical, 1 over n, and I take the square root. You're squaring the deviations. Now, when you square the deviation, you're going to get much larger weight to large observations and smaller weights to small observations. So most people have a feeling, you write down standard deviation, that's sigma, okay? That this, okay, mentally equals this. I take xi minus x bar, one over n. That's what people have in mind. The, the, maybe there's a little bit of light here, uh, Creating a shadow, okay. So they mistake this one for this one. This is the mean absolute deviation. And actually, the ratio between these two corresponds to fat tails. For the Gaussian distribution, sigma over mean absolute deviation equals square root of pi over 2. Okay, that's for the Gaussian. Most other deviations, most other have higher, which is about approximately 1.25. Most distribution, of course, fat tails, higher, and this goes to infinite when you have a power law distribution with a tail exponent higher than Okay, so now you wonder, and, and I wrote this uh, chapter and I said it, uh, you know, in expressive term, why the fuck did we use standard deviation? 
since what people have in mind is mean deviation. Why? It leads to aberration. Let me show you the aberration. I mean, when mentally someone asks you how much the temperature change wherever you live, say in uh, you live in uh, southern uh, the southern uh, section of Palermo, Sicily. Uh, presently in the Republic of Italy, someone asks you how much does temperature change, what do you do? You take the deviations, you square them, take that average and take square root? No. You say, well, the other day it changed by five degrees, the other, and then you had eight degrees, uh, and then you had, what, uh, seven degrees, or oh, average. Okay. So that's how you work. You don't square that notion of squares is what really has fucked up statistics quite a bit. That it worked for Gaussian. Even, even then, we're not that sure. So let me um, explain, show you, for example, why, where man mean average deviation doesn't map to standard deviation. Let's take 0, 0, 999,999 in deviation. And then you have a million. Okay, so you have a million observations. All of them are zero except for one. <laughs> it's a million. Okay. Compute standard deviation. Standard deviation is going to be about a uh, thousand. And what is mean absolute deviation? It's going to be two. So sigma over mad is going to be five hundred. <laughs> So sigma is going to be 500 times the average deviation. Why? Because think about it. You're squaring. These have no weights. It's like a weighting operator in which you have more weights on a large deviation and no weights on a small deviation. <laughs> Zero, the things close to the mean, which is one, <laughs> have no deviation. So you realize the absurdity of it. It doesn't matter to anything. I worked out the math to show you the distortions in it in statistical cost with the fat tails. But then, I just wonder why do people use standard deviation? For a Gaussian, it makes sense because about 67.8% of the observation fall between minus one and plus one standard deviations. Okay, you may say so. Standard deviation allows us to do some limit theorems when it comes to uh, uh, probability theory, okay? And, and when you want to derive uh, some stuff, some results, okay, that's fine. You don't need it. So the strange thing, and you can try it, take data, just to show you that standard deviation isn't a metric that is very intuitive. Let's say around x, mean is zero. So you have observations, positive observations and negative observations. Take the negative standard deviation and take the positive standard deviation. And you'll see it's not additive. You're going to have half of the positive, half negative. The negative standard deviation plus the positive standard deviation will not map to the total. Try it, and you'll see that it's not additive. So before getting into correlation, what is correlation? Correlation is pretty much the scale. You take the covariance, covariance x, y, over STD of x, which is basically square root of the variance of x, and it's the STD of y. So we're already starting off with a metric here that doesn't correspond uh, to what you think. When I will discuss correlation again, I will show what people have in mind with correlation typically is mentally they look at something called the beta, which is going to be the correlation x, y over rho x, depending on what you use, x over rho y, or depending on what you're looking, how you're expressing your beta. And, and this normalized, of course, would be 1. So people will have in mind this metric, and we show that it fails in a nonlinear environment. 
Thank you. Thanks a lot for listening, and have a great day.